There's something that every European juggling convention gets wrong, and that is the staging of juggling shows in temporary venues. Which is incredible, because the EJC, one of the main activities there, is watching juggling shows in temporary venues. Now it's easy to get the staging of juggling shows correct in existing theatres. For example, at the EJC in 2017, the gala show was in an opera house, an amazing theatre. There wasn't a bad seat there, even if you're way up in the balcony looking down at the stage. But in temporary show venues, like stages set up in big tops and juggling halls, the same mistakes are made over and over and over again. The lessons that could have been learned one year and never passed on to the organizers of the convention the next year. So this video is an attempt to break the chain of lessons not learned. It's also a video for everyone who's watching who's not interested in organizing a juggling festival. This will explain why. You go to some shows in a venue at the start of the week, but then a few days into the EJC, you're like, oh, I'm not gonna go back there. And by the end, you, you just never return to that venue again. This is for you. The reason why the staging of these shows is so so bad year after year is down to one factor and one factor only really this is it not blaming anyone but what happens is that the people who are building the stage setting up the sound and lighting are not jugglers and they don't understand what is needed for a juggling show they're just a company that's been hired to provide the equipment they come in and set it up but those people they're not like me they've not been to 19 EJC's before they've not watched like hundreds and hundreds of juggling shows at the EJC or like someone like me again who has organized and put on maybe 50 open stages and other big events at EJC's. They would just work for a private company and their job is normally like maybe setting up for music festivals or maybe they're hired to provide staging at conferences for people standing on stage and giving talks and lectures. In advance of the convention, they get a few specifications from the juggling convention organizers, maybe about something about the size of the stage or what lighting might be good. And they come along and they set up the stage and the lighting and the sounds and they put things in the places where they think is good, lessons learned from music festivals and conferences. And then the jugglers come along and they start doing the tech for the first show on the first day and they're like, hey wait, this stage is the wrong height, it's in the wrong place, the lighting is incorrect, but by then the people who set up the stage, they finish their job. They're not going to redo the job, they're not going to do all the work again. And also, they might not even be there, they've probably been hired to set it up. And then they leave, go to another festival, another conference, and set up something there. Then what happens for the next nine days of the festival, thousands of jugglers have a bad experience in that venue, or at least a sub-optimal experience in that temporary venue. So again, this video is to help future EJC organizers to get all of these requirements down on paper and given to the people who are gonna set up the stage before they start ordering the equipment and certainly before they start building the stage and putting everything in place. These things are really, really important, but the non-juggler technicians won't know in advance. Of course, they can't know. They're not expert juggling conventioneers, but I am, so let's do this. There are only two factors to consider when staging a juggling show. First is that a juggling show is a visual experience. And second is that a juggling show is a live experience which depends on audience energy. Now the first flows into the second. The more people who are having a good visual experience, the better the energy is in the audience. I'm gonna break the rest of this video down into four sections. First up is stage height. And this is really important because typically, unlike lights, which you can like point in different directions or turn off, once the stage is set, you can't really adjust the height of it. Juggling is done with the entire body, from the soles of the feet all the way to the top of the head and above. But let's just concentrate on the person. There's often things placed on the ground, like props and things done with the feet, kicking up. Entire juggling acts are done by people laying on their back. Which means there should never be something on the stage or at stage level which isn't visible to everybody in the audience. This is not true if it's a stage set up for a, for a lecture or a conference. Anything that happens like below waist height of one of these people speaking, it's not important. In fact, they stand behind a lectern. And that also is true with concerts at music events. Anything from like the hips down, the waist down, isn't that important. There's just like the guitarist's feet or some cables on the floor. Nobody really cares about that. In fact, you want the musicians to be lower down and close to the audience because that creates an energy. But with juggling shows, as soon as anybody ducks down and does anything low down and the people can't see, it kills the energy. People are just annoyed that they can't see what's going on. This entire thing creates what I call the foot juggler applause. And that's when people at the front who can see applaud the foot juggler doing something laying down. Then an entire section don't see what's happening. And then the people at the back in the tribune or standing at the back, they applaud. So there's like these two sections, applause at the front, applause at the very 
back and this massive gap of energy in the middle. What do you think of the show? Could you see any of it? Yeah, yeah, I was right at the front. Oh, the right. So you were one of the 30 people clapping when he did something on the floor. Exactly. Now, when the people come along and they start setting up the stage at a juggling convention, they just put in a stage which they think, oh, this is fine for a music event, or this is fine for a conference, but it's not good enough for a juggling show. A juggling show stage needs to be higher. It needs to not be the level of the guitarist's feet standing at the front of the stage. It has to actually be the level of the drum riser. It has to be the level of the drummer's feet at the back of the stage, but for the entire stage. That's the height that we're looking at. Really, there's two basic stage heights that you should be putting up at a temporary juggling show venue. One is that if there's seating in front of the stage, the stage has to be the height of the top of the head of the people in the audience. But if there's no seats and people are sitting on the floor, it also has to be that same height. It has to be the height of the top of someone's head who's sitting on the floor. And this decision has to be made before the event begins because the two can't be mixed. Now, lots of events try and mix it. Lots of venues, they try and have the best of both worlds. They thought, well, we'll have a stage which is low enough for one, and then the people sitting on the floor will be fine, and then behind the people sitting on the floor we'll have some seats, then we'll have like 30, 40 rows of seats going back, and then behind them people can stand or they can be in the tribune, but that doesn't work at all because the people sitting on this floor, they all have a good view. And then the first three rows of people sitting on seats, they also have a good view, but everyone further back than that doesn't have a good view at all. In fact, they're just really pissed off because they can't see what's happening, which once people learned that there was nowhere to see the show, there was no seat there you could see the show, people just wouldn't sit in that. So for the later shows, there was just a massive expanse of empty seats. And these people who decide just not to bother if they're not at the front of the queue and they know they're not gonna get a good seat, they're like, well, I won't bother going to the show. Those people have to be factored in to the calculations that you make to see, well, is it worth putting on a show here? And how big should the show venue be? So if the stage, is the good height for people sitting on the floor in front of it. The only option is to remove all of the seating except for maybe two or three rows of seats at the very back. If there's already seats set up there, move them out of the way before the first show, otherwise it's too late. You'll be training people not to bother coming back to that venue to see another show because they know that the seats are bad. Even if you already take them away afterwards, they still think the seats there are bad and they don't bother turning up. Clear the seats away even if you pay for them. Just clear them away. So you might think a higher stage is always better, but that's not true. Check out this from the open stage in Lublin. The special stage show was too low, but this one was too high. The people sitting in the audience could only ever see the people on stage if they were standing at the very front of the stage. And I'm now at the center of the stage where you might feel comfortable doing your things, but actually the audience can't see you. There were marks on the floor on the stage just to make sure the performers knew that if they're at the back, they couldn't be seen, and if they were front, they could. So there was this massive eight section stage and only the first like three sections were usable at all it was a massive waste of space and again there's an energy gap if nobody at the front can see what's happening onto the stage or if there's just nobody sitting within the first like 10 meters of the stage an energy gap people want to be there they want to be as close as possible if there's no stage at all and the juggler is performing with their feet on the ground Seats are just not an option at all. In fact, there should be no seats at all. Everyone should be sitting on the ground except for maybe one or two lines of seat at the very back. Last year at the Catch Festival, Juliana and I just didn't even bother going to Wes Peden's show because we realized he was performing on ground level in front of seats. So instead of modifying his juggling show or instead of clearing all the seats out of the auditorium, Instead, he performed for 10% of the audience who were happy you could see at the front, but then 90% of the audience was just pissed off that they couldn't see what was happening. Part two. Once we know the height of the stage, we now need to know where to put it in this temporary venue. Let's have a look though at the EJC this year. It was a temporary, it was a last minute change. They moved it into the hall. The hall was long and thin and they thought, hey, theater. We're doing theater here. There's a stage, we put it here and then everyone will be in front of the stage and everyone will be able to look straight on at the stage and see what's happening. But theater is the wrong thing to do because theaters never have anyone too far away from the stage. And how far is too far? Well, I was sitting about halfway back through that show and I needed the zoom lens on my camera to see some of the subtle tricks that were going on. Without the camera, I couldn't really see. Juliana couldn't see. And then we were only halfway back. Half of the audience was behind us and we were sort of like maybe 30 meters away from the stage. Theaters don't have this problem because theaters, people are never that far away. To get people close to the stage, they stack people on top of each other. Audience on audience in balconies so nobody is too far away. Way. Now you can't do that in a temporary venue, but what you can do is don't think theatre, think boxing or wrestling, where you do things with lots of people packed as closely as possible looking from different angles. In fact, don't think that, maybe think, I know this is weird to say it for a juggling festival, but think circus. Now, if 30 metres is too far away from the stage, but you put the stage in the middle, there's never
never a place where anybody can be too far away if you surround the stage by people rather than line them up in rows and make them look forward at the stage. And of course, there's lots of juggling acts and all kinds of things which aren't really designed to be performed in the round. You still kind of want to have a front of the stage. So the best shape or layout of the stage is to do it as a thrust stage, which means you put it in the middle and people can sit on three sides. Once the venue fills up, of course the people who got there first and got the best seats, they'll be sitting in front of the stage, they'll have the best view, but the people from the sides will still have a good view, or at least an okay view. And we know this about jugglers, they'd rather be sitting close to the stage looking at the juggler from a weird angle than looking at it from the perfect angle but be too far away to see what's going on. Now you might think this lesson has already been learned for shows set up in big tops, because often in big tops you'll have two poles right in the middle so you can't put the stage at one end because then there's poles in front. So they put the stage against one side of the long side of the tent. But then they'll often set it up like a proscenium. They'll set it up as though it's a theater. They put curtains around the side of the stage so you can't look at things from the side. This might not sound like a big issue, but consider again the EJC in Lublin in 2017. The organizers did an amazing job. These students, they managed to cram probably over a thousand people into a big top to see Wes Peden's solo show. But somebody else, the people who had set up the stage, had decided nobody is going to be able to see these shows from the side. Wes Peden didn't decide that, but some technician who didn't know set it up beforehand. So I ended up watching and trying to take photos and take videos through a black curtain on the side of the stage. And then other people discovered, hey, we can see from back here better. And people came around and they were more willing to sit behind Wes Peden, watch him from behind through a black curtain than have a bad view, an obstructed view. So just keep that in mind. If there's a space which isn't the stage, that's somewhere where an audience member will be perfectly willing to sit and watch a show. The closer to the stage, the better. You have to set the venue up with this in mind. Anywhere that's not the stage or backstage is a space for the audience to be sitting. Now, some acts only work from one angle. For example, the same EJC. The Pity Patter Hoffen show is mostly seen from the front because they're messing around behind a table and they don't want people to see behind the table. But that shouldn't be the default because that was one show. They should have put the curtains up at the side for that one show and then for every other show in that venue, taken the curtains down. I understand why they'd set up the curtains for that one specific show. But things like that, which only work from one angle, are normally a tiny minority of things that are happening on stage. Maybe one or two acts for five or ten shows that are happening in that venue require anything like that. And if an act, five minute act in a juggling show, doesn't work at all for the people looking at from the sides, tell the people, hey, maybe you shouldn't be in the show at all, or maybe this is, a, this is an issue for you. Don't make it a major issue for literally thousands and thousands of people who are going to be watching shows in this venue throughout the week. Just by taking down the curtains. So take down the curtains on the side of the stage. Let people have unobstructed views all the way around the side. It's the best option. Again, it just comes down to the fact that jugglers are willing to sit closer to the stage to have a closer view rather than a front on view. So let them get close. Anywhere that's not the stage is for the audience. Take down the curtains. Let people get close. Don't put the stage at the end of the venue where everyone's looking straight on. Put it in the middle or the side where people can sit all the way around and get as close as they want. Okay, part three is obstructed side. Line. So you've got the stage in the perfect place and it's the perfect height and everyone would be happy. There's still lots of things that people will put in the way of the jugglers which obstruct their view. But the people putting them there don't know because they're used to doing concerts and lectures and other things not for jugglers. So let's go down this list and let's see what blocks the view which don't need to be there. First up we have rows of lights along the front of the stage. This is the worst thing ever for me as a photographer who wants to get the full juggler but everybody suffers from the lights on the front of the stage blocking the view. Also then, the monitors on the front of the stage. This is for people who are playing guitar and singing to be able to hear their voices and their instruments really, really well. Jugglers don't need to be able to hear the music that well. Put the monitors on the floor in front of the stage. And then you often have these massive speaker stacks on either side of the stage. Again, they're just blocking the view. The audience don't need to hear the music in the best fidelity and the most incredible, but put the speakers up in, up in their ceiling or on the back of the stage, not on the front of the stage blocking the view. I'd love to have seen that trick, but there's a box in front. If there's steps or walkways or entrances on and off the stage, that'll often mean there's some steps going up and there'll be a handrail. So make sure those steps are at the back of the stage, back corners of the stage, so those handrails aren't in the way of the audience's view. In fact, treat all three sides of the stage as you 
wood, the front of the stage. The side of the stage at juggling conventions often just becomes a place where the technicians will put the lighting boxes and fader boxes and there'll be boxes of unused cables and boxes where the lights went. Make sure all of that is behind the stage, not the side of the stage. You wouldn't put it on the front of the stage, so at a juggling festival, don't put it at the side of the stage. Also, weirdly, children and photographers. Neither children nor photographers have any idea that there's people behind them who might want to see. They just stand there. The camera's up on the stage blocking the view. There's like three people standing in the way there and another three photographers over there. I really feel really sorry for the people at the front who just missed the finale of that act because there's literally six photographers waiting in front of the stage. Next up is the sound desk and the lighting desk. They have perfect places at music venues. You put the lighting desk right next to the stage so they can see everything that's going on and you put the sound desk in the middle of the audience so they can hear the perfect sound mix. But the people behind, there might be 250 people who can't see because the lighting desk is in front of them or the sound desk is in front of them. So put the lighting desk and the sound desk back as far away from the stage as possible. The only thing that should be behind them is a wall or the side of the tent. Next up is tent poles. These are really tricky to work with because they can't be moved around but you shouldn't just ignore them or just take them as a, a perfectly normal part of the way that people are going to watch it. No, use the tent poles to work out where you're going to be positioning the stage and also where you're going to position the tribunes or other seating which can't be moved. It's really important. This year again at the EJC they had these two side tribunes, one on one side, one on the other side, but you couldn't see the stage because of the curtains, but also because of these tent poles, which meant that the side tribunes were only ever 50% full. There was a perfect triangle where people would be sitting and could see, and then another perfect triangle, 50% where people couldn't see. During the Diablo battle, people were sitting on the steps of the tribune, but of course they were asked to move by the stewards for safety reasons. But instead of going over to literally the 50% of empty seats, they left the venue. They didn't bother sticking around. They're like, oh, there's not a good view, and they just left. The final thing that obstructs the view of people who could be sitting and watching the show is the tribune seating itself. Don't put the tribune seats up in a way that blocks where other people could be sitting to watch the show. Again, at the EJC this year, the side tribunes were 50% empty, but there was a section behind the tribunes which was completely empty where people could have been sitting to see the show, otherwise it would have had an, a perfect, unobstructed view of the stage. No tent poles, no curtains, perfect view. Instead, there was seating there and the seating was 50% empty. It was like a doubled up waste of space. Part four, the last main part, stage lighting for juggling shows. And I'm going to sum this up in one point and one point only, and it's this. Don't shine lights into the eyes of audience members. It might sound really obvious for juggling, which is visual and you mostly want to be looking at something and lights shining in your eyes is really, really bad. But the technicians who are setting up lightings, they'll maybe more often do music festivals and concerts where, of course, there's lights shining on the people playing musical instruments on the stage, but a lot of the lights are actually turned onto the audience. Lights are sweeping across the audience, there's color and flashing and all that kind of stuff. And the audience are using that lighting to see each other. And the energy at a music concert comes from lots of people all dancing along to the same music or singing along to the same music. They can see each other and that's part of it. At a juggling show, 99% of the lighting should be focused on making it easy for the audience to see the juggler performing on stage. Another 9% of the lighting should be for the juggler to be able to see their props in the air. But if the lighting is designed well and installed properly, actually all of that 99% of the light will be doing the same job, helping the audience see the juggler and the juggler to be able to see their props. Only 1% of the light should be about lighting the audience, for the audience to see other members of the audience, or for the performer on stage to be able to see the audience. If there's only one light out of 100 shining into the audience, but that light is a massive floodlight at the top of the back of the stage, just blasting into the eyes of the people watching, that's not good enough. And the worst thing is when the lighting technician turns the light up to light the audience with light in their eyes when they start applauding. Normally, like, if the crowd goes wild at a music event, yeah, turn the lights up, shine it up, like, let the people on stage see the people react acting to that. But a juggling show, it acts in the opposite direction. It kills the energy because people start clapping and then there's a light in their eyes and they're like, oh no, I don't like this. And they cringe and squint. And so you're actually training with this like reverse Pavlovian response. Like don't clap. If you clap too much, people like they'll turn the lights on and blind you. So it actually trains the audience to not give back in a way that the, the performer on stage wants to, to, to hear what's going on. They don't see. They're looking at the juggling. They're not looking at the audience. They want to hear the audience response. They don't want to see the audience response. So lighting the audience is just the worst thing ever. So here's the thing, juggling convention organizers, make sure that there's somebody in the venue 
when they're setting up the lights, who is a juggler, and it's very important that they're a juggler, who can go to any point in the audience. When they're setting up a light, they stand there, and if a light, is, if it's possible to be shining in their eyes in the audience, tell them to move the light and only point it into the stage area, not into the audience. It's very important that it's a juggler who does this, and they're there for the entire setup of the lighting. It's really, really, really important, but People who are used to setting up for concerts and music events like that, they don't know, they're going to do the opposite. If they want to use flashing lights or colored lights for effect and energy, shine that onto the stage or onto the back curtain or up into the canopy of the tent. It should never be shone into the eyes of the audience. I'd love to say that me and Juliana haven't resorted to putting on sunglasses in some open stages just to be able to see what's going on on stage, but of course, that's not true. So there are my four categories, all of which emphasize the visual aspect of the show and the energy of the audience. Now, my message to all future European juggling convention organizers is this, please get this all sorted out before the first show begins. In fact, before then, before they even set it up. In fact, before then, before you even start ordering the equipment, the people who you're ordering the equipment for think they know best, but they know best for music events and they know best for conferences with people giving talks. They don't know best for juggling shows. You know best, I know best. Have someone there who already knows and lays these things out because they're really, really important. Do it before it's too late. And let me tell you when it's too late. It's too late at the moment the first show begins because that's when you start training people that the show venue is bad and that only 50 seats are good or only 500 seats out of 1,500 seats are good and then there's 500 which are okay but not really worth it and then there's 500 which are completely useless. You're training people that if they're not in that first 500 that it's not worth going to the show. So you have this massive only one third to one half utilized space and the rest of it is just wasted and people don't come back and they're unhappy, they want to see the show but they're just like, ah, it's not worth it because I go along there and I'm probably not going to have a good view of the show and you have to do that before the first show starts because that's when you start training the audience not to return but if there's issues after the first show it's okay to sort them out then, do it. Don't fall prey to the sunk cost fallacy. Sure, you paid for the curtains and people worked really hard to take them up, but just get rid of the curtains and the lights, move them out of the way. Get someone qualified to pull out the cable of the light that's shining into the eyes of the audience so the non-juggler technician won't keep sliding up the fader and blinding people. You've, you've paid for all this tribune seating and it's hard work. It's all gonna be taken down at the festival anyway. Take it down on the first day before the festival starts rather than at the end and make a bad experience for thousands and thousands of people at the festival. You owe them better and you can just remove things if they're in the way at the beginning of the week rather than when you take down the entire site at the end of the week. There's always going to be 500 happy people in every show but there's also the thousand people who are unhappy in the show or who didn't arrive at all. And the more people who can see, the more people have a good visual experience, they provide energy for the artists and everyone else there and the better the energy the better the show and we all want better shows. Shows. All right, that's it. I know this has been a long video, but I think this is really important because it's not just me who suffers with light shining in my eyes. Lots of people do. I think this is really important to get out there and to have this discussion and break the chain of lessons not learned from one festival to the next. So if you've enjoyed this video, if you got through to the end of it, uh, please consider supporting me on patreon.com. Go to patreon.com forward slash Luke Burridge. And in doing so, you also get access to an exclusive podcast, The Juggling Podcast. And last episode, uh, the August episode, we went into a deep dive into these issues, but actually lots of other issues which made the energy at the EJC Gala show this year so bad and so flat. And I think you'll really enjoy that. Thanks for watching.